You are invited to continue our Lenten journey on Wednesday evening with a soup supper at 515 and at 6 o'clock we will have the uh, eat, hold an evening prayer and the the speaker will be John from the, below the cross and he will talk about Father forgive them. If you are interested in a cross like Jackie is wearing, Jackie could you stand up? There's a with your name on it. There is a sign-up sheet in the back on the table. There is a women's Bible study that meets on the second Thursday. This would be this coming Thursday at 1 o'clock here. And we are studying the commandments. All of you women and daughters are welcome. Are there any other questions? Then as we continue our journey through Lent, let us prepare our hearts for worshiping our Savior. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join in the confession. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's mercy and all of his promises. Gracious God, we need to hide hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in that an image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ. The wisdom and power of God, your, our sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Christ. As you are able, please rise for the gathering song, Lift High the Cross, ELW 660 verses 1, 3, and 4. Please rise.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join in our repentance this morning. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins, for we know our transgressions and our sins are ever before us. Against you, you alone have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, we were born guilty sinners when our mothers conceived us. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach us wisdom in our secret hearts. Purge us with hyssop, and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Let us hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. you bring us to new birth, to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises, that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now in God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 121. Let's read it responsively, please. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 4. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to the book of Matthew. John. From John chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not see where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. 
If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from earth, who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Savior. Amen. His name was Paul. He lived in a small town in the Pacific Northwest almost a century ago. He was just a little boy when his family became the proud owners of one of the very first telephones in the neighborhood. It was one of those wooden boxes attached to the wall with a shiny receiver hanging down and the mouthpiece attached to the front. Young Paul watched and listened with fascination as his mom and dad used that phone. And he discovered that somewhere inside that wonderful device called a telephone lived an amazing person. And her name was, information please, and there was nothing that she didn't know. She knew everybody's phone number and even the correct time. Well, Paul's first personal experience came one day when he was home alone and he hit his finger with the hammer. The pain was awful. And he didn't know quite what to do. And then he thought of the telephone. So he quickly pulled a stool under, reached up, unhooked the, the uh, receiver, and said, information please. There was a click or two and then a voice, a small clear voice. I hurt my finger, Paul wailed into the phone. Isn't your mother home? Nobody's home but me, Paul wailed. Are you bleeding? No, said Paul. I hit my finger with the hammer and it really hurts. This is dating it. Can you open your ice box? Yes. Then go and get some ice and hold it to your finger. Paul did just that, and it helped a lot. After that, Paul called information please for everything. She helped him with his geography and his math. She taught him how to spell the word fix. She told him how to feed his new pet chipmunk. And when his pet canary died, she listened to his grief so tenderly and then said, Paul, always remember there are other worlds to sing in. Somehow that helped Paul feel better. 
Now, when Paul was nine years old, he and his family moved from the Pacific Northwest to Boston. And as the years passed, he missed information, please, really. Some years later, as Paul was on his way out west to go to college, the plane landed in Seattle, found a telephone. He called and said, information please. Information. Paul hadn't planned this but he suddenly burst out. Could you please tell me how to word, spell the word fix? Came the answer. I guess your finger has all healed by now. <laughs> Paul laughed. So it's really you, Paul said. Do you have any idea how much it meant to me to talk to you when I was a little boy? I wonder, she said, if you know how much it meant to me. I never had any children, and I used to look forward to every one of your calls so very much. Paul told her just how he had uh, missed her over those many, many years, and he asked if he could call her again if he got into the area. Please do, she said. Just ask for Sally. Three months later, Paul was back in Seattle. He went to a phone booth and called. Information, please. He asked for Sally. A strange and different voice answered. Are you a friend? The operator asked. Oh, yes, this is Paul, a very old friend. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, she said. Sally has been working only part-time the last few years because she's been sick. She died a few weeks ago. Before he could even gulp or hang the phone up, the operator said, wait a minute. Did you say your name was Paul? Yes. Well, Sally left you a message in case you should call. Let me read it to you. It says, when Paul calls, tell him that I still say there are other worlds to sing in. He will know what I mean. Paul thanked her, and he sadly hung up. And yes, indeed, he did know what she meant. There are other worlds to live in. It is a powerful thought when you think of it, and that is precisely what John chapter 3 is all about. In John 3, where it talks about Nicodemus meeting Jesus, he is talking about other worlds to sing in, in this life, and yes, in the life after. When Jesus said to Nicodemus that night, you must be born again, you must be born of water and the spirit, you must be born from above, this is what he meant. You don't have to stay the way you are. You can make a new start. You can have a new life. You can become a new person. For there are other worlds to sing in. Remember this story with me. Nicodemus was a key leader among the Jews in the time of Jesus. He was probably from a very wealthy, very respected family in the community. He was a Pharisee, one of the brotherhood of over 6,000 men who had taken a pledge in front of three witnesses that they would dedicate their lives to observe every letter of the law. In fact, in Hebrew, there's a word that says to the nth degree. 
the Pharisees consecrated their lives to becoming so, so perfect through the law. In addition, Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the supreme court of the Jews. Now the Sanhedrin had only 70 members of all those 6,000 Pharisees. The top 70, how they figured that out, I don't know, made the Sanhedrin jury, and Nicodemus was one of them. The Sanhedrin had religious authority over every Jew in the world. And one of its primary duties was to examine and deal with anyone suspected of being a false prophet. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Why? Was he afraid of guilt by association? Was he fearful of what his Pharisee colleagues would think? Did he want a private audience undisturbed with Jesus? Was he coming as a watchdog from the Sanhedrin? Or was he genuinely interested in getting to know Jesus himself better? These are all fascinating questions, but what is amazing is that he came to Jesus at all. After all, Jesus was not one of them. And besides that, the whole group of Pharisees were very suspicious of Jesus. They had labeled him an upstart, a troublemaker, who is upsetting the people. So even the Romans' ears were starting to perk up. And they all were looking for an opportunity to silence Jesus. He was a threat. But Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, you must be a teacher who has come from God because no one could do the signs and wonders you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus responded to Nicodemus by saying, you cannot see the kingdom of God without being born again. You must be born from above. In other words, this means that you don't become a Christian by tweaking a little bit, making a minor adjustment in your life. According to Jesus, it must be a complete turnaround, a radical rebirth, a rebirth from above, which of course means a new life in God. Nicodemus did not get it. He did not understand so Jesus explained with what many would call the greatest verse in all of the Bible, John 3, 16. Please repeat it with me as you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Several years ago, the great boxer Muhammad Ali was asked by a ghetto youth how he could get away from school and become a boxing star. His grades were lousy, he told Ali. All Ali smiled at the young man, and in his poetic style, this is what he said. Stay in college and get the knowledge, and stay there till you're through. Because if God can make penicillin out of moldy bread, he can make something good out of you. This is the news, the good news from John chapter 3. Because God loved the world so much, he sent his only son to make something good out of us. When we allow him into our lives, day by day by day and commit our hearts to him then he grants us a new life in this world and new life in the world to come that's what it means to be born again and to be born from above but let me be more specific to be born again 
means to come alive to the Bible, for in the Bible we continue to meet God. In his book, Pri Biblical Proclamation for Africa Today, John Wesley tells a wonderful story about a young lady who lived in a small town and heard about a book. Everybody was talking about it. It was just, oh, you got to get it. So she went down to the bookstore, bought it, took it home, sat down with a cup of tea, and tried to read it. She found it very hard to understand. She just couldn't get into it. You know that kind of book. And eventually she just put it aside. It did not capture her attention. Well, a few months later, this young man was traveling in a foreign country. She met a handsome young man, and she fell in love with him. As they spent time together, she discovered that he was a writer. I think you know where this is going. He was the very author of that book everyone was talking about way back home. The one she had bought, tried to read, couldn't get into, and put aside. When she returned, she found that book, read it from cover to cover, read it again and again and again. So what was the difference? Simply this. The author she had met. She knew him personally. He was her friend. And she was in love with him. The story is a wonderful parable for what it means to come alive to the Bible. If we don't know Jesus personally, the Bible is hard to read. It's tough to get into. And it's very easy to put aside. But when we know Jesus personally, when we feel his love and return his love, then the Bible comes, becomes alive for us. It becomes a love letter from God. And it becomes the most exciting book we've ever read in our life. You know, there's a fascinating thing to notice here about Nicodemus. He knew the word well. He knew his scriptures. He knew every jot and tittle. But to him, being righteous meant do, knowing what to do and also knowing what not to do. But Jesus changed that, and he reminds us of this change. We are born for God because it was what Jesus did, not what we did. It is God's gift. We cannot earn it. We can only accept it by faith. Because to be born ab above means to come alive to the Bible by falling in love with the author and finisher of our faith. This is the good news of the Christian faith. We can be born again in this life. And we can be born again when death comes, because there are other worlds to sing in, and we call them heaven. When we allow Jesus into our lives, as we have done through baptism, we know God will always be there for us, even on the other side of the grave, another world in which to sing. And we can count on that, because we know that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Being born from above means many things, but for sure it means allowing Jesus daily into our lives as our savior, coming alive to the Bible, and in doing so, we come alive to Christ-like love and to coming alive to eternal life. May we each be born again every day, for there are other worlds to sing in. Jesus said it, and I believe it. Amen.
Please rise as you are able for the hymn of the day, God Loved the World, ELW 323, verses 1, 4, and 5. Let us confess our Christian faith this morning by declaring the Nicene Creed on page 12. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one with Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond with, hear our prayer. God of Abraham and Sarah, God of all earth's families, bless this church, our church, your church, to be a blessing and bestow your grace to a hurting world. Lord, in your mercy. You made and love the whole cosmos. Help us to love all of the creatures and life within it. Lord, in your mercy. Our help is in you. Keep the nations, 
their governments, and their people from all evil, especially in the Ukraine and in Russia. Lord, in your mercy, your promises ease our pain and sorrow. Grant comfort, healing, and joy to all who are in need. We now pray for those on our hearts, whether aloud or silently. Norman, Margaret, and Paul, Sue, Scott, Joe, Sharon, and Sharon, John, and John. Lord, in your mercy, lead this assembly in its Lenten journey toward faith, works of love, and prayer. Let those gathered here be fed and nourished by your word. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, mercy of God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. At this time, please greet one another as you are comfortable. You know what, it's a good thing this goes on and on and on. As the offering is taken, please join in Bread of Life from Heaven, ELW 474, verses 1, 4, and 5.
Please rise as you are comfortable. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather before these consecrated elements of bread and wine for the celebration of Holy Communion, we hear again the story of God's mighty acts and of the love shown us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We are given assurance of our Lord's presence through this gift of his Holy Spirit. As we prepare to receive this bread of life and this cup of blessing, we pray that we may be strengthened through our participation in the body of Christ. Let us join our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone is welcome at the table of the Lord and at Shepherd of the Lakes. Please come forward as the ushers direct. Receive the bread in your hand and then receive the wine in the individual cups or the chalice by dipping the host into the wine in the chalice. Grape juice is offered as an alternative to the wine in both chalice, small ch chamber, of uh, grape juice and in individual cups that are clearly marked. We also have gluten-free wafers for those who are in need. Simply ask for them when you come forward. Small children and all others who wish not to commune may come forward for a blessing. All are welcome at the Lord's table. Please come.
Please rise. Please rise as you are comfortable for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we have now received, strengthen and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you made us from the dust of the earth, now filled and nourished with the body and blood of your Son. Raise us up and help us turn toward you with open hearts, beholding your glory, that by your grace we may receive everlasting. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all, now and forever. Amen. As our Lenten journey continues, please our sending song is How Firm a Foundation, ELW 796, verses 1, 2, and 4. as our Lenten journey continues. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.